started. And of course the pattern is linked below. The free pattern is available on my website if you want to follow along from there or just reference it back if you're making this yourself and don't want to keep re-watching the video. We're going to chain 15. And then from there, keeping your chain straight, slip into the first stitch. I know some of you are happy that this is not a magic ring. <laughs> People seem to love those or really, really dislike them. I found a method I like and I don't, I'm not bothered by them anymore. Flip through, oh, my yarn split. Some of these cotton yarns do that. But I love cotton yarn so much. And then crochet in each of the 15 in that back loop all the way around. And I will meet you back after I've done that. Alright, I've done 15 and I'm going to slip to join in the first stitch that I made. I don't want to be too tight with that stitch. And then mark that stitch. And then now I'm going to work three increases. So I'm going to go from 15 stitches to 18 stitches. And I will work two single crochet in the first stitch. And then in the fifth stitch, here's stitch number two. Three, four, stitch five, put two in there. And then as I'm working around, when I get to the tenth stitch, I'll put two in there also. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Second stitch in there and finish the round, giving me a total of 21 stitches. I will slip to join and move the stitch marker. I'm going to finish up these rounds and then come back when I start working the different stitches. We're coming to the end of round six. And this is where stitches start to change. So I've only been working a single crochet until now, and on round seven, I'll be working half double crochet. And I'm also beginning um, Okay, so I'll still be doing increases on this row, or this round my stitch marker back in. Once you start changing colors, you may not find you need the stitch marker, but initially the first few rounds, absolutely, they are helpful. I'm gonna do two half double crochets in the first stitch. And then again in the 10th stitch in the 20th stitch. I'm going to finish this round and then it's time to introduce the zebra stripe color and I'll be right back with that at the end of this round. 
Alright, I finished round seven and now I'm going to show you how to get the fish scale look by introducing this new color. So something I want to point out is that in the pattern you will only be increasing when you're using this main body color. The accent row round will have no increases. I'm going to insert into that first hook, drop a loop, bring in my, I'm using the zebra color yarn. You can use solid black or any other color you like. But I wanted the stripey look. So you'll go into the first stitch, no increases this round, like I just said, just remember that. Work a single crochet. <clears throat> Then we're going to start doing spiky stitches. And we'll be doing that with half double crochet stitches. So yarn over, we're going to go down to the row below that first or the last row of single crochet under the first row of half double crochet. Kind of look where they line up. Since you're working in the round, they're not going to be perfectly aligned. So you kind of have to use your judgment. So I'm going to, let's see, this looks like there. So I'm going to go under here and then keep track by looking behind. This corresponds with this stitch. We need this row count to remain the same. Pull up, pull through. I'll work single crochet into my next stitch, which is this one. Yarn over and look where I'm going to spike down. Not there, but here. I'm just going to look back to see. That will be this stitch. So, this is the next one I need to work into. I'm going to hold my finger on that one. I think I got a little twisted there. scale for me. Yarn over, spike again, not there, but here. That goes with this stitch. This space would have gone with that one. This space looks like it'll work well with this. That's my next single crochet. Let me spike. See when I'm holding the stitch with this finger, I don't have my usual attention. There we go. Next. Turn over, spike here. Pull up. Don't be too tight. You don't want this getting bunchy. It's trying to look like the collar framing the face of our fish. Down. Spike, single crochet. And then I'm going to come back and show you different points at when, because of the increase might throw you off depending on how you are about um, things being perfect. I'm not someone who has a brain like that. I'm all into the creative interpretation. But if you start feeling um, maybe frustrated that things aren't lining up perfectly, I'm going to show you how to work that. They are not going to line up perfectly, but you're going to be able to um, still get a good result. Let me see if I can find some examples on here. I'd already filmed when I was doing this one some examples. Let's see. So you had to do it several times, but you can see it still looks like you see here how there's 
a little bit more white grouped together. So on the next row, I had to create a new spike because that was the increased section and the spikes would not have lined up. So you just correct that on your next time around. So I'm going to show you some examples of that in the next clip or two. It'll be in there. I'm going to do some of the spike stitch rows now that I'm working in a decrease. If you're a little uneasy about where to put them, because there's, you know, this is this is art, this is not a science, right? <laughs> so I've just done, you can see I'm trying to keep these spikes relatively close and to maintain that the main color, of course, is still the main color, but I also want that, I mean, what's the point of having accent yarn, right, if it's not accenting correctly? So I'm just gonna play around, and what I wanna point out is Try to avoid having two, um, what do we call these, clusters in a row. There should always be something breaking it up. So if you have to create a whole new spike, do that. Okay, so let's see. I just did this one. Here's, here's a line. Are your eyes going crazy from the striped yarn? <laughs> I told you it might do that to you. <laughs> it's almost like it could put you in a trance. All right, so. That would go with this stitch up here because remember we're not increasing or decreasing on these what i call the round eight rows you'll see that in the pattern so i'm going to work down in here i'm going to keep in mind that that goes with this stitch i'm going to put my finger on this stitch because i know that that one's next so let me go down under to create that little bit of a spike pull through and work my next half double crochet where i was just holding that now I'm going to look and see if there's a spike right there, so that works out. It's getting a little petty close, but that's going to go with that stitch. Let me hold that one so that I know it's next. When you do these where you're kind of wrapping it down below, sometimes you can forget what's going on behind it or under it. But by holding it, I know exactly where my hook goes next. And let's see where I have. Right, there's a spike there and there. This is going to be cutting it too close. I'm going to work just a second regular half double crochet and I'll spike here. And then when I come back around doing an accent row the next time, I'm going to look at these and I'm going to have to create a new spike there just to make sure that there's not too much white together or of the main color together if you use a different color. I don't want to say white, but if you like how this one looks, you're probably using colors I'm using or something similar. Okay, so that's how to do that. You just have to use your judgment kind of as you go, make it work. And so I've done just three stitches to uh, bring my work or the finish round because I have a, you know I want to lay, I have a certain direction I want to lay in. And then I'm just going to go along this open edge and Work some slip stitches across to close it up and then make the tail. Look, cut my yarn and tie up the end or weave in the end. And then now I'm going to show you how to make the fish tail. I've started working the tail and it's pretty simple. So in the pattern you'll see how much you're supposed to chain and then you work a single crochet row and then you come back down and start with the decrease. So how this works is the top row will always lay flush straight and then of course the bottom is where you're going to get the that fishtail inverted V shape. And to get the fish texture, I'm on row, I'm at row four now. I'm going to do a chain one and work a full single crochet into that first stitch. And then back loop only 
for all the stitches of the body of the tail, except for the very end. So the decreases will be at the bottom. They're going to decrease and then increase as we work back up the other side. But at the very end of the row, let's, let's get to a decrease. Let me show you. You can see the back loop only is giving a nice ribbing to give that fishy texture and some dimension. This yarn, let me tell you, it will make you go cross-eyed. <laughs> it's, a, it's a small piece that I'm working with this, so it's not a big deal, but oh my goodness. Let me tell you, one time I was trying to make a, a larger project with it, I thought it would be pretty, and I could not do more than, I think I got through about four rows, and I was going cross-eyed. <laughs> All right, so I'm coming to the bottom, and I'm going to do a decrease. There's the last stitch on the bottom, and I'm not going to work it. So I'm going to do a regular single crochet, otherwise it can look a little loosey-goosey, like a loose tooth, I would call it. And that's how the decrease is, we just ignore that last stitch. Chain one and decrease again. So skip over the first stitch, put a regular stitch into the second stitch from the hook, and then do the back loop only back up to the top working a full single crochet into that last top stitch. And then just follow the pattern. And it has the count of each row so that you can remember which row you're on, where you're at. And if you downloaded the single page project tracker, you can print out a second page. The tracker is enough to do the actual body of the fish, but not the fish tail. Okay, and then I'm putting in a full stitch into the top stitch, the end stitch, not top stitch, but it's the top of the tail. All right, you see how we're getting the decrease, and then it's straight up here. All right, so I'm going to finish this and I'll come back and show you how to attach it and then we're uh, going to put the little fish eye on there. I haven't decided what color eye my fish is going to have. Probably a blue. Fish usually have a green, hazel, or blue. I've seen some blue-eyed fish. I have blue-eyed cats. I think that's why I'm thinking blue. Not that it matters. These are crochet fish. They're not real. All right, so my tail is done. And I'm going to go back and forth with the tapestry needle. It's kind of loosely, not, not snug. And this step is going to shape the tail. You see I'm using a pretty long tail. Because I'm also going to attach it to the body with this. and tight. Let's see, let's pull it. It gives the shape of a fish tail. And you can play with it, get it to curve as much or as little as you like. I don't want too much of a curve because it's a pot holder. I don't know if that's anything to do with it, but that's just my my aesthetic choice. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to fit it. Oh, it's just perfect. And then kind of whip stitch it on.
I'm excited to show you the project trackers I have designed and I wish I did this years ago because they have been really wonderful to have. So first of all, nice size, fits right into a project bag. And this is the large print. In the front of the large print, I want to show you, there is a true to life four inch ruler so you can check your gauge easily. You don't have to fumble around look for a ruler. I've used this quite a bit in just the past four projects I've used in this book. And there's also small print. And each of these books has sections for small projects, mid-sized, and large projects like blankets. So the small projects, there's 60 stitches, like a, you know, a dishcloth something like that. And there's room for notes and I have space after each stitch that you check off. If you have to put a note, maybe you changed a color, you changed a stitch, you changed your hook. All of that can be in there. Mid-size projects, 180 stitches and there's room for notes. And then the blanket size, 330 stitches. And then Let's compare the large size print, which I need because I have terrible eyes since I was a teenager, compared to the small size. So handy. And of course a link will be available to get these if you want one for yourself. Alright, so I've started working on the eye. I've just taken the yarn, a little bit of blue yarn. This is dolphin blue from Paint Box, but I'm sure any blue you have, or if you want to use green, or just do all black, that would be fine too. And bring the yard one way, yarn, did I say yard? Yarn one way, do a little bit there, go under up here, and go back. So if you just go like back and forth at all. And so I've worked some blue yarn in here and I'm going to fill in that area with some black yarn. And you want to do this before the hook in the mouth is attached, otherwise it's going to be really hard to work in here. So I'm going to secure this, get all that woven in, and then the final step will be to attach the ring and then it's good to go. Alright, so now to put the, essentially the hook in the mouth, you can see from the opening, the hook is smaller than the mouth. Well, the ring, called the hook, but it's meant to look like a hook. So, going to attach the yarn, leave a long tail, and start working a decrease. And it also helps to give the ring support when this has been already worked around the circumference of the mouth. So follow the pattern, work the decrease. I'm going to weave this tail in as I go. That's why that tail is so long. We have a better fit now. Let's start crocheting the ring. We're not closing this up, just attaching the ring. Although you could, I suppose, but I want that I want it to look a little bit open. So I'm gonna slip stitch this onto the ring. 
and then along the back of the mouth, start stitching it. And I'm going to put two stitches in each stitch. Otherwise, there's only going to be like four, four stitches, and that's not enough to keep our fish on the hook. So there's two. There should be about eight total. If you need to go down a bit with your hook, that's fine. This is my smaller hook. I like this hook for detail work. It's four millimeter. All right, let's see how many I have on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see how many. Two more. this through and weave in the end and then it's done.